In this video, you're going to learn about Vanguard VFE ETF, one of Canadians most popular ways to invest in the US stock market. Hey, what's going on? I'm Chris Liu and I'm the creator of WealthAwesome.com, one of Canada's leading personal finance blog. If you're looking to branch out of investing in just Canadian stocks, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, otherwise known as VFV, could be the right solution for you. Passive investing has taken the world by storm. With over $26 billion of assets under management, Vanguard Canada is one of the pioneers of ETF investing in Canada. And Vanguard VFV is one of the most popular ones of their lineup. So with this VFV ETF review, let's take a close look and see why so many investors have chosen this product. Here's a great quote from Warren Buffett, who stated that after his death, he plans on investing most of his assets into index funds that track the S&P 500. What is Vanguard VFV ETF? VFV is a low cost index fund that is offered by Vanguard Canada since November 2012. VFV is one of Vanguard's most popular funds with $3.3 billion in total value as of August 31st, 2020. So what does Vanguard VFV invest in? VFV tracks as closely as possible the S&P 500, which is a broad US equity index. The S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index of 500 publicly traded companies in America. It's designed to identify the most important industries in the US equity market and allocates a sample of stocks from each industry to the S&P 500 by sector. There's 11 different sectors and 24 industry groups. It represents more than 83% of the total US equity market cap. So the S&P 500 is widely regarded as one of the best measures for how large cap US equities are performing. So VFE invests in stocks of these US equities and should track the S&P 500 very closely, net of course of any fees and expenses. So how are the S&P 500 companies selected? To be eligible for the S&P 500 index inclusion, a company should be a US company. It should have a market cap of at least $8.2 billion US dollars. It should be highly liquid. It should have a public float of at least 50% of its shares outstanding. And its most recent quarters earnings and the sum of its trailing four consecutive quarters earnings must be positive. A committee then gets together and decides which companies get into the S&P every quarter. And there was recently one in September that got together and decided um, some changes to S&P 500. There was some controversies with the selection because Tesla finally met all the criteria, but they weren't included in the S&P 500, which shows that it's not just market cap that matters, since Tesla is definitely one of the largest 500 companies in the US, but there's other factors that the community takes into account. They didn't really explain why they did it, which is why it was kind of controversial. VFV sector weighting. The great thing about the US stock market is the diversity of the companies. As you can see from the sector's weightings here, you get a nice diversified mix all the way from infotech down to consumer staples. Contrast this with the Canadian stock market, which is really top heavy in three sectors in financials, materials, and energy. So I feel that the US gets a lot more diversification and sector mix. VFV MER. The management expense ratio or the MER of VFE is very low at 0.09%. Compare this with extremely high mutual fund fees that Canadians pay that can average higher than 2% per year. And you can see why Canadians are flooding into ETFs in extremely large numbers. 2% is over 20 times more expensive than VFE. So a lot of mutual funds are 20 times the cost of VFE, which is crazy. It's not hard to see why Canadians are going into ETFs in such huge numbers. So Vanguard VFE even pays a dividend. Um, it's not a huge one. As of August 31st, 2020, the 12 months trailing yield is 1.41% and the distribution yield is 1.66% and it's paid out every quarter. VFE performance. No surprises here, VFE tracks the benchmark S&P 500 return very closely. Since the inception of the fund, VFE has performed slightly lower than the benchmark return. So it's slightly lower due to the 15% foreign withholding tax for dividends, but it's a pretty small amount and it doesn't cause the benchmark to lag by that much. VFE holdings. The top 10 holdings of VFE match up well with the sector ratings above. There's a nice diverse range of companies from big tech names, banking and finance, and consumer goods. So you'll recognize a lot of the names in this top 10 holdings here. 
So let's talk about some alternatives to Vanguard VFV or Vanguard versus some other funds. VFV versus VOO. Many people get confused by VOO versus VFV. VOO is simply the S&P 500 index fund that's offered by Vanguard US. It's not offered by Vanguard Canada. It's not available to be purchased by Canadian investors without having to convert the currency into US dollars. So if you want to passively track the S&P 500, it's probably better to go with the VFV and not VOO. VFV versus VSP. VSP is the Canadian dollar hedged version of VFV. If you want your investment to be hedged against the Canadian dollar and US dollar exchange rates, VSP might be a good choice for you. VFV versus IVV. IVV is iShares version of an S&P 500 index that is available to Canadians. It's also a fantastic option with an even lower MER of 0.04% and should have very similar performance with VFV. So it's a great option and alternative. VFV versus XUU. iShares XUU versus VFV is kind of like comparing apples to oranges because they don't track the same benchmark. XUU tracks the US total market index, which includes small and mid cap stocks, whereas VFV just tracks large caps. So it's not a great comparison. VFV versus VUN. VUN also tracks the US total market index, including small and mid cap stocks, whereas VFV only tracks large cap. So here's some different strategies you can use when buying VFV. First strategy is you could be like Warren Buffett. If you have a high risk tolerance, you can just buy all of it for your portfolio. Number two, you could buy it in combination of other ETFs or stocks. Number three, you could combine it with fixed income to balance out your portfolio. So who should buy VFV? You should buy Vanguard VFV if you want a low fee passive investing solution that tracks US large cap stocks. You should also buy it if you understand the risk involved with purchasing a 100% equity fund and are using it in combination with your overall investment strategy. You should also understand that if you're using it in combination with other fixed income funds, you should rebalance your asset mix at set time intervals. So make sure it doesn't stray too far from your asset allocations. So there's many ways to buy VFV, but the cheapest way is generally by using a discount broker. I've been using Quest Trade for all my stock and ETF trades for the past eight years. You can buy all Canadian ETFs like VFV for free on the platform. You can also get $50 in free stock trades with this offer if you open an account at Quest Trade in the description below. So VFV is a simple and effective fund from Vanguard that does it as advertised. It tracks the S&P 500. It's an effective option for passive investors. I'm a huge fan of VFV because I feel that American companies are just way more diverse and it helps you avoid home country bias if you purchase this. All right, so overall, I give it a score of five out of five. The pros of it is that it's very low cost. It tracks the S&P 500 closely and it's simple and effective. The cons of it are that it has slightly higher fees than iShares IVV. And in summary, it's an ETF for Canadians that track the S&P 500 index. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out content at least once a week. Also, be sure to check out the blog wealthawesome.com. It's one of Canada's leading personal finance blogs, and it's growing really fast. It goes into this topic in way more detail and also have a lot more other topics that you might be interested in. So be sure to check it out. And as always, thanks for listening.